So you've been you've been advocating for like learning to live with them, uh, and so because which is which is fine. Yeah. But can we talk a little bit more about how to suggest, suggest doing that? So like you know we might see them at dusk on the trail because we're going to buy a golf cart. And to me that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like yellow the the coyote if we you know if we just like whiz by him. But like if he's say out on the soccer field and we want to go play soccer, then we need to scare him off so he's get used to hanging around when we're playing soccer. <laughs> or if we, you know, it, it, it's like so I'm really curious about like when you would scare him yeah. right. and when you would not. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. You don't want him to get too used to hanging out along the trail where the golf cart's going by because the golf cart's tied to humans. So they're going to get used to humans in that same regard. Um, but they use the road for getting oh, yeah. around. I mean, they. No, that's where I saw it. I guess we could put horns on our golf cart and blow the horn out. Yeah, and they'll get used to that too. Oh, we'll take a tambourine next time. It's like yeah. I think the raccoons know when you. Right as soon as we go by the curiosity house. We do. <laughs> it's a challenge out here because yeah. the corridors that wildlife would use are oftentimes the same corridors that we use for getting around the island uh -huh. and so because the, the ecosystem here in the maritime forest is a naturally very very dense ecosystem so the routes that we've created to move around are used by the deer the coyotes the raccoons and that sort of thing and so the way we've developed the island we've kind of created these opportuni opportunities so to speak, for the, the coyotes. So as Sean was saying, you definitely don't want them underneath your house. Um, around the soccer bowl, places that we hang out, we would definitely haze them. But you know, if you're, as um, Jim mentioned, being down at low tide, and they're up in the dunes, it's 100 yards away, you know, they probably wouldn't even respond even if you right. hazed anyways. Yeah. Or as Reggie mentioned, if they're, you're driving down the road and they're crossing the trail perpendicular to you and they take off running, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because I didn't appreciate until Sean gave us the examples of how quickly they can become complacent and used to a noise so that we want to save those scare tactics for when they are around our house and, and not, you know, up at, um, in the dunes of the beach or that sort of thing. Well, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds like... That sense. Are they climbing the stairs, you know, like we get the raccoons and the other animals all the way, you know, up to our doors and stuff? Have anybody had experience with them climbing? No. I've not heard about that, though they are going down the, um, the ferry dock ramp mm -hmm. because we did have a couple of sightings, and that's because I watched on the, the cameras at the ferry dock um, some people were, were saying that they were waiting on the ferry, the, the coyote was down where the boats tie up, they were sitting there, the coyote ran up, they scared him, and they stepped out of the way because he just took off running back out away from where the golf carts parked. So I watched the, the video footage and there was a raccoon sniffing around the trash cans, sniffing around, going down where the boats, and about 10 minutes later I watched the coyote go in the exact same route that that raccoon went. Um, so that's why it's real important, as Sean mentioned, that you know, even though no one was setting out intentionally feeding the raccoon, I mean the, the coyote, the coyote was there sniffing what the raccoon was doing, and so it takes all of us to be mindful of disposing of our trash properly in the, in the trash cans, the ferry dock, because if we you know, set something out, the raccoons are going to come down, which then may entice the, rat, the coyotes to come and check out that situation. And so that's an example of indirect feeding that is, you know, promoting the coyote to come to that area and check things out. What about the green cones? Are they an attractive thing for the coyotes? They, they may, you know, come through and check them out. I'm not sure. I've, I've never really been around anyone's, um, they're asking about composting out at their house. Um, and, and that smell would definitely entice them. So just being mindful of, you know, how distant away that you're putting your, your, your composting and that sort of thing, definitely not composting with um, maintaining it in a way so you don't get those really strong, strong smells. But that's definitely something to be mindful of.